start planning for your retirement. Plan now and Call make your golden your years golden. I Come, know, I know. let's make it happen. I know, I know, I know. I know. On behalf of the East Caribbean Central Bank, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the first in the three-part series on retirement planning. This concept first came into being um, during October of 2017 when ECCB, during the Financial Information Month, uh, had retirement planning as their theme. Um, they have since decided to partner with the NTN to bring you this three-part series. So today we have with me um, three gentlemen who would give us some more insights on that information. We will be looking at preparing for retirement. We will look at organizational responsibilities, the personal and psychological aspect of retirement, we will, the uh, all-important life after retirement, which would require lifestyle changes, and the transitioning the idea is some, you know, some of us may decide to go into business, so we have someone here who would enlighten us on this. And also the all-important conquering the fears associated with retirement. So hopefully at the end of this session, we would have covered all of these areas and, and provided some insights. And with me are uh, uh, Mr. E Elijah Williams, director of Vibe Radio. Um, I also have Mr. Egbert Senshis, an economist with the Ministry of Finance, and who is in, on pre-retirement leave, he is transitioning um, into retirement. So we will get some insights from him. And I also have with me Mr. Egbert Stevens, um, who is a business development officer with the Business Development Center, formerly SEDU. Yes. So gentlemen, welcome. welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, we, will, we will begin with the gentleman who is transitioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you in the process of. I mean, wh what has been the thought process um, to get you to to where you are now? What, what has been the thought process? Yes. What are the things that that sort of kept you up at night? Yes. Well, for me, life begins at retirement, and I say so because, as you, as most persons would be aware, in the public service, the retirement age is fifty-five, and I think most people will agree that fifty-five years is relatively young. It's a relatively young age to, for one to retire. So, um, you know, I, I think there, as part of the preparation for retirement, uh, for me personally, I, I prepared myself for it mm -hmm. by upgrading my skills and by putting together things, um, a number of things to allow me to retire and to take on a new life, basically, mm -hmm. after retirement. Oh. So, so, um, so, for example, um, I'm, I'm an economist, so I would have um, have much, much experience in you know advising the government on various economic policy matters. So I would have um, provided, um, I would have taken the opportunity to upgrade my skills in various areas, so that um, after retirement I can go into consultancy, I can go into business, or even you know take on a, a new role in, in a different capacity. So all of those plans, and um, I decided about three years before retirement. Mm -hmm. So during that three year, during that three year period, um, I had sufficient time to put my thought together in terms of what exactly I would like to do after retirement, and to ensure that um, I'm ready. You know? I think you, you answered yeah. sort of my, my follow-up yeah. question would have been how long, mm -hmm. how long did you begin that process? Yes. And now that you've said it, it took, it, you started three years ago, um, do you think that three years is, is sufficient? Well, for me personally, I think it is. Uh, for some persons, I guess, in, in the, in, in, during, uh, it depends on the circumstances. It may not be sufficient time. But for me, um, you know, given where, where, I, where I am at this point in time, mm -hmm. I think that was sufficient time. Because one of the things I really want to do is to, um, you know, pro, uh, perform at a higher level, um, you know, at the international level. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I've worked in Central most time and also at ECCB in St. Kitts as well. 
but I would work, like to work at the international level. So mm -hmm. I've upgraded my skills to allow me to do that, and I'm in the transition to, to doing that. Mm -hmm. And I also um, want to do some level of consultancy, mm -hmm. whether it's in Russia or abroad, and you know, I've equipped myself to allow me to do that as well. I also plan to do some voluntary work because um, I think that you know, after you know, being in the system for, in my case, for almost 36 years, mm -hmm. I think it's time to give back to society and I would really like to provide an opportunity to volunteer in a, in a different capacity to allow me to give back. So I think that is very important. Um, and to do something different, you know, something that you enjoy, at the same time you, f you feel rewarded in, in, in giving back to society. Okay. So that's very important for me. Okay. I, I want to pursue that question <laughs> further with I, you know, either Egbert or Elijah. Um, in terms of time, I mean, you from a perspective of uh, an entrepreneur, you, 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 you're a young man and you've started your, bus your, 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 your own business. Um, you, in the perspective of, of, of a business development officer, you obviously advise people on a regular basis and you see people who have transitioned, I mean, who are in the transition process, deciding to, to you know, um, start their own business. Uh, what, what, what comes to you in terms of the time frame where that is required to make the right decisions? Well, Mrs. David, I, I don't think there's a, a set period of time to really um, to attribute to retirement. I think it really is the person's state of mind, the development as to where, what they would they like to do upon retirement. And I think that may be one of the burning questions that persons need to address. What do I want to do after I've left this place of employment? I mean, we have Mrs. who's an economist, we have Elijah who's a business person. When you ever get to that, they say ripe old age, but it's not old, it's ripe age. Mm -hmm. It's not old. Mm -hmm. When someone's ripe, it's not old, right? When it gets to that age where he figures, okay, I don't really want to work anymore, what does he do? Or she? What, 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 what does that individual do? When do they decide? Some persons may decide they want to retire at 50. Mm -hmm. They want to retire at 40 because they're in business and they don't want to do anything else. But it's really a state of mind of, we as individuals preparing ourselves as to where we want to go and the how. Mm -hmm. Now as a business development officer, I tell people, especially when it comes to business persons, we encourage them to put something aside for your retirement. Do that human resource planning early as to what do you want to do, when you want to do it, and prepare for it. Because most times, persons are just confronted with a Retirement has come upon me, and they have not given it any thought as to what is going to happen then. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's really something I think that persons need to take stock of, even in the middle, the, 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 when they just transition from youth between 35 and 40, from since then, start to plan for yourselves. What do I want to do when I retire? Do I want to become a business person? Do I want to go to agriculture? Do I want to tour the world? Do I want to just sit back and... Um, spend time with my grandchildren or my children, what do you want to do? And I think that that is the important thing. When you have decided what you want to do, then now you can start planning towards it. You know, I don't know if Elijah okay, is what Elijah has to say well, as, a young, as a young man, <coughs> young just, entrepreneur. Let me just start off by um, saying to uh, Mr. Stevens that um, RIPE is the start of the decaying process. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to use RIPE. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, I was fortunate enough that um, one of my first jobs I worked at a bank, mm -hmm. and um, part of my training was um, 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 retirement planning, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was trained, you know, to help advise clients who come in um, to plan for retirement. Obviously, the bank had instruments that um, you could have purchased to use to assist you with planning for your retirement, mm -hmm. and so that was the thrust, you know, of it. But I became very aware of retirement from a very young age. Um, Egbert touched on something that um, I think is very critical. Um, for you to go about determining what you're going to do in terms of your retirement planning, you must first establish what do you want to do when you retire. Mm -hmm. um, as he indicated, is it, do you plan on traveling the world? Do you plan on just staying home and relaxing? Do you plan on establishing a little garden in, in your backyard, etc.? Um, so whatever it is that you envision you doing after retirement should really guide what you do in terms of your retirement planning. Um, I personally, I don't think it's, it's ever 
too soon to start retirement planning um, for a simple reason. The sooner you start, the less you have to input to get to where you want. Um, uh, if you start with 10 years left before you retire, you actually have 10 years to put in place whatever it is that you want to establish for retirement. Um, and I hold that thought. We we'll yeah. take a break and we'll continue uh, um, on, on, on that topic. Thanks. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Okay, Elijah, could you continue on, on the midpoint to me? Yeah, I, I, I was saying, you know, um, you know it's, it's never too soon to start. Um, you, you know, the, the more time you give yourself, you know, you can manage in terms of what you put away, in terms of savings, you can manage in terms of what you plan for. Um, you can also make changes along the way. You have enough time to make changes along the way if, you know, something comes up. So I, 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 from a personal standpoint, I've been thinking of retirement from as young as 20 years old. Um, for me, my, my ultimate retirement plan would have been to be self-employed, to establish a business that could go on generating revenues for me even after I have decided to retire. Mm -hmm. And I, I, as, I mean, you can see I'm well on the way in terms of executing that. But, you know, I, I think it's critical two things that, one, you know what you want to do when you retire. And two, that you give yourself enough time so that you can plan adequately to achieve that when your retirement age comes about. Um, one thing I, I like to remind people of, you know, when I speak of retirement, is the, the, the cost factor. The, um, you, you're in a steady job, you have a, a steady income, you, you, you work with that. But re when you retire, that changes. Mm -hmm. So your, your capacity to earn, um, you know, your ability to earn in terms of what, you know, what comes in on a regular basis is definitely not the same. So even if you, you have a, 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 like you contribute to NIC, um, and then there's a fixed amount that you will get. Yeah. In most cases, that may not be sufficient, especially if you come out of a, a salary bracket, which is, you know, how many times that, you know, how what what can you do to bridge that gap to to assist you in making the transition, or or maybe what sort of lifestyle changes that you may need, but also taking into consideration the fact that there will be some costs that come at you regardless. So how, 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 how do you prepare? How do you plan for that? What do you do? Well, from a, from a, from a business development point of view, um, we, we ask persons to consider what they would like to, what's, what's the minimum living condition that they need, right? And if you start from that minimum living condition, that on a minimum basis, if I need, well, let's just use an arbitrary figure, $2,000 to survive on a monthly basis, we now have to start planning to put in mm. measures in place to achieve that. And as Elijah was saying, the planning, if you do it at, from an early enough um, age, staging in, in your work life, it allows for any adjustments because you know um, life is not static. You have inflation, you have all different other things. You know, person have to put things in place. It's, 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 not, it's not something that, um, we have a blueprint for to say it must be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But there's some basic things that you must do, which is you must plan. You must know what you want. And by knowing what you want, then now you can plan how to get there. And I mean, probably even Mr. Sergis, from an economic mm -hmm. point of view, I think can shed some light as to mm -hmm. what persons, <coughs> you know, the, the things persons can do to assist themselves, you know, um, put a saving aside, 
look at um, their, their lifestyle. What do, what do you want? And I mean, as early and you do it like incrementally. I mean, for government workers, it compulsory um, retirement age is 55. So by the time you get 50, 45, going to 50, you're supposed to be putting things in place as to what you want to do, how you want, how you want to get it done. What, we, what, what grade you are in government service, look at the salaries, find out from the government service what, what would be the, the, the income you would have achieved if you were to retire at that age, at that level. So you, get, you know what, what, what's coming. And now you could put your expenses in perspective. If you have mortgage to pay, whatever, if you want to go into business, what would be the cost coming? You have, to, you have agencies like Small Business Development Center, CEDU, that you could come to, find out what it is if I want to go into a particular kind of business, what it would you require? And that way you prepare yourself, you know, and, and that's the basically the economics of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> I would like to take off from where Mr. Steven has left off. Um, so from a government employee perspective, one of the advantages of, well, two actually, is that um, number one, the retirement age in government is fairly low. 55, I think, is relatively young. And uh, number two, working in the government, you tend to get a lot of experience in various aspects of whether it's business or in the technical field. So you'd, um, you'd be well qualified in terms of your, not just your, your, your academic achievement, but your experience mm -hmm. as well, because there are a lot of training opportunities in government. So therefore, when you retire, I believe, particularly at the professional level, persons at the professional <laughs> level, they have a lot of experience in terms of, you know, various options, whether they want to go into investment, whether they want to go into managing a business, whether they want to go into consultancy, whether they want to have another full-time job. So I think they, it gives them a broad range, as I say, particularly at the professional level, in terms of the options that are available to them. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that would equip them to, to, you know, to consider one of those options. And um, for me personally, I think um, you know, operating at a, at a professional level, it allows me to so it gives me this, this many, many options to, to go into. Mm -hmm. And um, I think in St. Lucia, there's a lot of scope for consultancy because you find that a lot of the, the, the government initiatives, we have to rely on foreign consultants. Mm -hmm. And I think we have reached a stage where we need, to, um, we, we need to reduce the reliance on foreign consultancies and to use the skills that are homegrown to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to undertake a lot of those consultancies in the government. And um, so that's one area which I think <coughs> at a professional level that one can go into. Um, there are a lot of opportunities to invest. Um, increasingly, our financial system, not just in San Lucia, but within the OECS and, and even the wider region, is becoming a lot more sophisticated. So we can look at various in investment options, whether it's in, it's in stocks and bonds and various instruments. Um, we also c can look at businesses, um, well, in business development, as Mr. Stevens has, has, has mentioned. So I think the, the, the options, the, the opportunities, increasingly becoming a lot more diverse. And um, persons should really consider taking advantage of, one of uh, at least some of those op options. That are I mean, my follow-up question would be, mm -hmm. what happens to the non-professional? Mm -hmm. How does the non-professional prepare mm -hmm. themselves for retirement? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the key word that has been used here, it's re recurring, is investment. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is not sufficient for you to think that you can simply pile up monies on your savings account mm -hmm. and then when you retire, you will live off of that. Who knows how long you're going to live after retirement? What mm -hmm. if you get to the age of 100, which might constitute ripe at that time? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but um, if you get to 100 and you retire at 55, do you have enough savings yeah. saved up for you to live for another 45 years? Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the key thing here mm -hmm. for me, um, uh, as Mr. Stevens said, as Mr. Sergi said, mm -hmm. is investment. Um, I, for one, you know, I always like to, you know, um, advise young people um, to be mindful right now of what they spend money on, right? Um, something very basic that we tend not to pay too much attention to, um, are you spending on your, your money on stuff that appreciates in value or are you spending money on stuff that depreciates in value? Right? So as a young person, I, 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 I advise other young people, if you, if you want to buy yourself a gift, why not buy a piece of jewelry? Um, I, I don't know how often gold goes down on the international market. Um, I don't know how often precious stones, the value of them, go down on the inter international market. So a piece of jewelry that you may have bought for $500 now, in the next 15, 20 years, maybe 
three, four times that value. Um, that's an investment. Uh, it may seem on the surface that you're just treating yourself, which it also serves that purpose, but effectively you are making an investment. Why not, why not purchase a piece of land as opposed to changing your vehicle for changing your vehicle's sake? You know? So uh, if we, if we um, think along those lines from a very young age, um, it's not just about piling monies up on a savings account because I, I may not have $100,000 saved up on a, on a savings account, but I have land that I can now put up on the market and redeem it for cash. I have um, precious stones. I have you know, precious yeah, jewelry that I can go back and, and, and redeem if, if you know, the, the need arises. So <clears throat> um, investment, I think, is the key thing here. Um, it's not just about saving. People often think of retirement as I must save for retirement. Okay. You must invest for retirement because inevitably what you want to do is to continue to have a revenue stream that is coming to you. As you indicated, um, um, your pension may be a shade of what your, your salary is. And, and, and yes, you may find yourself in a scenario where when you retire, your expenses may decrease. You may not have your kids at home anymore. They may have left the house and gone out and you know, your usage at home may be a little less, etc. However, your lifestyle. And that is where having an appreciation for what you want to do when you get to retirement age comes in. All right, so. Okay. Um, again, we, we just stop for a break and we will continue, yes. continue with, that, with, that, with that point. Do you really even know all the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth? All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. No, think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. Okay, let's let's continue the discussion. Um, you mentioned the whole question of you know expenses may 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 decrease, but it's also, we also need to look at the possibility of the in, where the expenses increase. Increase. Um, so your the sal the, your income in ter terms of what your 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 spending power may reduce because of what comes in, but there's also the possibility of increases, particularly. Um, if people have not paid paid off their mortgages by the time they've retired. So what 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 do you suggest in terms of, you know, how do people, you know, prepare for those um, eventualities? Well, the, the preparation for this eventuality, I mean, people have, have to be mindful of the health as well as, as, as the um, the assets that they, they, they acquire in, the, in the, the, the period where they seem to be making the most income. Um, you find some persons who look for lavish houses, expensive vehicles and whatnot, and they don't prepare for retirement by looking at what will be the cost of maintenance of these assets after I've retired. And as Elijah rightly said, your income has reduced. You're now, instead of earning so many zeros, you're now down to so many, you're down lower by so many zeros. A person has to be aware of how can I use those assets to earn income, can I can I can I um, sublet part of my house? You know, repair some parts of it for for, for renting, because as as we know, our children don't stay with us. Those of us who do have, mm -hmm. and those who don't have, we are to now make sure that we put measures in place to assist ourselves. Health is something that's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Most persons, while they're working in a group insurance, when they're retired now, insurance is all on you only. It's not a group and. Most times, the cost of that is triple what you're paying. How people have to be, have have persons been aware, or I mean, they sat down and look at the cost of health, which is a very, very significant thing. As Elijah said, sometimes you retire and you don't even have time to spend the retirement check that they, they give you. Health just takes 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 it away from you. But it's really the the whole issue of planning, and persons 
being aware that I have to retire and that the earlier I start planning for that retirement, the better. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, um, I, I think um, there should be a lot more focus on financial literacy, mm -hmm. particularly for persons who are nearing retirement, even those who have already retired. I think the ECCB is doing a fairly good job in promoting financial literacy within the subregion. And I think um, there really needs to educate um, persons, not just retired, but the, the masses, the population in general, mm -hmm. about how to uh, look for investment opportunities, or, you know, how to be able to measure rates of return and, and, and those things. Um, because as I said earlier, there is increasingly the financial market is becoming a little more sophisticated and the person needs to be well educated. Not to have, because you can end up losing instead of gaining, yeah, gaining. If, if you're not able to, yeah. if, you're not, if you don't understand how the market works. So I think, um, as Mr. Mr. Elijah Williams said earlier, there should be a lot more focus on investment rather than saving, because the bank only give you 2%. And yeah, if you have a yeah. fixed deposit, it might be even less, depending on how much you have in, in your account. So it doesn't much return on that. So the, real, the focus really should be on investment planning. Mm -hmm. And how do you um, look for various options for investing, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in financial instruments, you know, whether it's stocks, bonds, etc., government papers, uh, private company, corporate bonds, etc. I mean, there are a lot of other opportunities. So I think um, retirees have to focus a lot more on how to invest their earnings. And I mean, they would have, particularly for those of us in the public service, would have gotten a gratuity. And then we need to look at how we can invest that yes, to, to earn a lot more high return. Because as you said, if you live 30, 40 years after retirement, I mean, the money could, could dry out even in 10 years' time if you don't manage it properly. That's right. So you need to be able to think of how you can maximize your returns um, during that period. You know, even, even something in addition to that, and, and I, I, um, Mr. Sergis as an economist could probably speak to that. Mm -hmm. um, I have no way of determining what the rate of inflation will be mm -hmm. when I get to retirement age mm -hmm. at this current point in time. Mm -hmm. So the value of my money that is in the bank today may, have, may, may be able to buy a, a particular basket of commodities. Mm -hmm. Will it be able to do that in 20 years' time? Mm -hmm. You know, so which kind of places the emphasis even more on investment mm -hmm. because it's not sufficient just for you to just pile up cash and just figure that that, that will that, be that, sufficient. That, that, that's, that, yeah, yes, yeah, that's very true. And I, I mean, even when we look at business, persons now would, would say, okay, well, when I retire, I will start a business, I'll start a, a little uh, agricultural farm or something. But the cost of inputs, the cost when it comes to what will you get on the sale, the value of, of, of inputs as, as, as time goes by is something that most persons don't even think about, mm -hmm. much less process. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you look at it now, you have persons say, okay, well, I'm going I'm going to, go, to plant, um, let's say for instance, I'm going to plant vegetables. Well, what is the cost of, what, what is the, what's the value of vegetables on the market? What's the, imp, what's the, 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 the purchasing power of vegetables? It may, be look, it may look like a, nice, a very lucrative business, but then based on your lifestyle and what you want to achieve, it might not give you the returns that you need to achieve that. So we, we, it's, it's really for persons to, know, as we said, plan early. Look at the, the value of, of investments, and you look at investment not only in real estate, in human resource. If you want to go and work for somebody else, you go, like Mr. Sis wants to go mm -hmm. to the international arena, what is that value of, of that investment that he has done already, mm -hmm. which is his education and his experience, mm -hmm. going into that market? And how is he going to use it? It's not just going and work somewhere or going and do, and go into business. How will you use that investment, the return on it, mm -hmm. to continue your lifestyle and continue having a good living? As you see, as one other thing, what do you think um, organizations can do to prepare their employees for retirement? What 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 more can they do? Uh, financial literacy, as um, mm -hmm. Mr. Sergi alluded to earlier on, um, quite a few people are just not thinking along the lines of retirement. Um, you may have establishments that have pension plans in place, mm -hmm. but that still does not prompt the employee to think along the lines of retirement. They just know that it's mandatory that they contribute to a pension plan and they mm -hmm. do it. Um, but financial, you know, literacy, mm -hmm. you know, bring people in, you know, like yourself, mm -hmm. that can um, speak to, because I, I must say thank you to yourself because mm -hmm. I've, I've been to a few of your seminars and it, it has helped provide me with, you know, the foresight mm -hmm. 
you know, to, for me to push ahead and, and go into my own thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, that's the, 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 the way that um, mm -hmm. corporations should be moving at this point in time. You know, you know mm -hmm. educate your staff as to the importance of, you know, um, and, and, mm -hmm. and then we take it from there. Yeah, um, I, I, I think we'll... Go ahead, Mr. Singh. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> and I think um, there are organizations, for example, the Pensioners Association, mm -hmm. they can work in conjunction with government and various employers mm -hmm. in terms of educating the prospective, prospective um, retirees on opportunities that might be available in terms of how, how to manage. Because, um, you know, I, I think similar to, for example, we have the, 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 the career guidance in, at the schools, at, for example, South Louis, for young people who are, who are going into building their career. We can have it for retirees. A, a sort of um, guidance course on what opportunities are available for persons who have retired. So I think the Pension I, I, Association I, I and the employers can educate. I think the, 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 need, the need for education, yes. the need yes. for yes. education, and, and there clearly think, is a need for that. And I think that. too, some organizations might need to um, prompt the, the employees that mm -hmm. Retirement, though it when is a year left, but yeah. probably two, three years. It's important. No, I, think, I think, like Elijah said, very. The, I think the earlier people can begin to two, plan for retirement, yes. the better it would be for if everybody. I, if I can just say on um, a it, last I, note. <laughs> If I can, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, every Monday morning on Vibe Radio, mm -hmm. we do a program with um, the uh, Department of Commerce. Mm -hmm. um, it's very informative, and people can tune in at 8.30 every Monday so that they can, you know, probably learn some things in terms of guiding themselves mm -hmm. along the lines of financial okay. management. Great. 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 But, gentlemen, it's been, you know, time has, has reached on us, but it's been, you know, an interesting com um, conversation. There are lots more to be covered in terms of retirement planning and um, the series, which is a three-part, this is only, you know, part one. Hopefully we've opened, you know, yes, we've, well, opened, up, we've and, opened up the topic. And and Sedo is open, so yeah. persons who are thinking of retirement always coming to us and they get a business revenue to speak to them on any business idea they may have mm -hmm. to prepare for their retirement. That's okay. one thing they could also do. But thank you very much for, you know, starting the conversation and thank you to ECCB for, you know, um, beginning uh, this series. Mm -hmm. And so we look forward to the second and the third part. And if necessary, um, based on our first discussion, mm -hmm. you know, there's also have brought in some more food for thought and um, the, uh, the discussion will continue. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Start planning for your retirement. Plan now and Money make your golden years golden. Come, let's make it happen. I